These six tennis players have won hundreds of national championship titles, dozens of world championship titles, and pretty much every other trophy and award you can get as an adult tennis player. That's impressive, but if they had ignored the one problem you're gonna learn the solution to in this video, their success wouldn't have been nearly as extraordinary. In fact, it's pretty likely at least a few of them wouldn't be playing tennis at all anymore, just like the countless other players who have to quit the game they love every year. That one critical problem is injuries. Every day, they tragically end the careers of tennis players like you and me, but it doesn't have to be that way. Here's the thing. Those six players didn't win all those championships because they were lucky enough to never get injured. They won them in spite of it. They got hurt over the years, just like the rest of us do. But instead of ignoring the pain, playing through it, and eventually giving up, they found solutions. Solutions that they shared with me in exclusive interviews, and I'm excited to pass them on to you now. Because let's face it, you love tennis way too much to have it bring you pain and failure instead of joy and success. So let's dive right into the insights from these legends. Well, I've been pretty fortunate, but I would say that as soon as I have an injury, I reach out to those people that I consider on, on my body team. I have a, several people out here in Boulder. One is a you know, pretty basic massage therapist, physical therapist, who's really good at uh, doing release work if I pull muscles and stuff. Um, I go to an acupuncturist regularly and I think he's a great healer. I, I trust him and with everything, he's the first person I go to. And then I have a person who does massage that does like healing. I'm not quite sure what she does, but I feel really good when I go to her. So I, I use them a lot uh, as necessary but I address an injury, you know, as quickly as possible. Maybe I give it a day or two. Usually I think things will go away, but if not, I get right to it. And then I call Phil Ward frequently, who is a great musculoskeletal guy that we both met at Tennis Congress. He's a master. He can fix me over the phone, you know, like with giving me the exercise and strength work I need to do. I love Bob's idea of building a body team so much. Think about it. Top tennis pros travel with a wide range of experts who specialize in different types of healing, recovery, and relief. That way, no matter what pops up, they're ready to attack it and bounce back as quickly as possible. You should build your own body team so that you can do the same thing. I was curious what Bob looks for when considering who to work with on his team, and here's his insightful answer. If they listen to have my whole long story, <laughs> <laughs> They probably don't need to, because they're good at what they do, mm -hmm. but they give me the time to like, go through my whole shtick about like, why I need to get better fast, and like, and I'm like a professional athlete, and don't treat me like I'm not, and you know, the thing that PJ brought up years ago for us. Um, so somebody who really takes the time to listen, and then somebody who often will say, let me think about this and get back to you, Somebody who's not so quick with the answer. There's just something about that that um, it bothers you if they have a snap uh, decision on whatever it is. This is what's wrong. Yeah. Like, wait, you didn't like put your hands on me yet, even. Hmm. But, yeah, I mean, people are too quick. I mean, I, I'm a big proponent of putting space between reaction and response. And I feel that that's important with the people that are going to work on me, that their internal reaction, what they think right away is one thing, but their response, I mean, at least wait like 45 seconds before you tell me I'll probably need a shot or, or that I think what you need is this, you know, you're, you're good. I get it. But like a lot of quick response from a reaction is based on the past. Yep. Not on the present. Your body team is going to help you bounce back as quickly as possible. But what about avoiding aches and pains to begin with? What keeps PT visits to a minimum? Here's what Jimmy had to say. Let me just say, since I mentioned that word, I think that flexibility is almost the single mm -hmm. biggest factor in how a senior continues to be able to play. So whatever it is that you can do, I've, I've always been a 
advocate of yoga and uh, I stretch daily. And uh, I, I heard also that uh, they were interviewing Djokovic's wife and and uh, they were asking her what, what the two of them do around the house. And, and, uh, and she said, well, mostly he's just on the floor stretching. <laughs> so, so here's a guy that's, you know, in his prime and, and he's devoting a lot of his off court stuff to stretching. But I, I really think that, uh, one of my advantages is that I'm, I'm not, I haven't lost as much flexibility as some of the guys that I've seen. This advice from Scott really hit home for me as well listening to my body that that i think is is something that a lot of people don't do um at any age but you know that i'm acutely aware of every little twinge you know that i of of, of you know what feels good what doesn't I, I i know like i keep a kind of a mental timeline of like okay how's my leg feeling this is the leg that you know that i had surgery on and you know how does it feel to flex what, what kind of you know am i able to crouch down and stand up that sort of thing i'm i'm, I'm always monitoring myself and how I feel and if I'm not feeling great then I will perform accordingly I will I will I will you know behave accordingly on the court I will not I will you know, I won't take that extra step I won't stretch you know or, or on the court I'll stretch before but yeah but that sort of thing something else that really really resonated with me was this balanced advice from Phil for all of us who are a little bit more type A when it comes to injury rehab don't be one of these people that thinks that the doctor says do this do this do that that you're going to do three times that amount. That's all you're going to do is have a, have a setback and, and you're going to have to go through the surgery again. And I, yeah. I've got a couple of my friends and, and I love them dearly, but they're, they're the type of personality that more is better. And when it comes with health or injuries, it's not. And, and particularly those first, like when I had my knee surgeries, those first four months, I did exactly what the doctor told me and what my physical therapist told me. I didn't do one rep more of a rubber band or a weight. I, I just said, for four months, I'm gonna do that. The legends revealed so many practical ideas that I put into action immediately to help me move towards my best tennis today, tomorrow, and for the next 40 years to come. Now I have a concrete plan of attack, and I know so many other tennis players need one too. So I gathered everything I've learned over the last few years of trial and error and combined it with the full Legend interviews into an online system called Timeless Tennis. Go to www.timelesstennistraining.com now for full details so you can feel your best and play your best no matter what your age. Thanks for the opportunity, man. Really appreciate it. Nice. Sweet. Thanks, Scott. You're welcome. Thanks, that was fun. That was, that was actually great. a lot of fun. It was good. Wow, man, we were talking a while. Well. fast. Yeah.